Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. What is power? Let me define for you the power of God. In fact, power generally. Please write. I have two definitions here or three that I want you to please put down. Number one, power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. Power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. The ability to influence outcomes is called power. The ability to do, the ability to influence outcomes, all kinds of outcomes. Human outcomes, circumstantial outcomes, spiritual outcomes, financial outcomes. The ability to do and the ability to influence outcomes is called power. Do you understand that definition? That means if someone comes here now who say for instance is sick and I can exert an energy and influence upon that person and that person instantly becomes healed. There was an agency, am I right on that? That functioned like a drug into that person's body that corrected that anomaly. We call that power. Everywhere you see outcomes influenced to line up with the will of God and to line up in such a way that it, it makes the saints to be victorious. That there, right there, is the manifestation of the power of God. What turns a man from poverty to wealth is power. What turns a man from defeat to an excelling life is power. What subdues principalities, witches and wizards and causes an individual regardless your background to emerge is power. One more time, power is defined as the ability or capacity to do the ability to influence outcomes. Number two, I define power as the force that compels compliance. Power is the force that compels compliance. Very powerful definition. The force that compels compliance. You can put in bracket obedience. The force that compels compliance. The capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance. That means everywhere power is available, you know the presence of power by the manifestation of obedience. Are we together? Everywhere there is power, there must be obedience to the will and the dictates of the person manifesting the power. When you see lawlessness and you see disobedience, it's a sign that power is not present or that power is not being executed accurately. Am I right on that? Yes, sir. Write this down, please. Every result, and listen carefully, every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result, prosperity, increase, great children, a great marital destiny, great ministry, abundance, increase spiritually. Every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result. When you see results in the kingdom, in any variety of its expressions, I am telling you that at the back of every result is the manifestation of power. Now, whether that power is positively used or not is something else we are going to discuss. Watch this. That also includes a herbalist who will tell someone, come, I want to prosper you. Go and bring a goat. Go and bring a chicken. 
and it does some incantations and mixes all of those things and tells the person go and by the time he gets to the office they promote him twice in one month and you are wondering that there is power being manifested whether it glorifies God or not is something else we're going to discuss but we're settling the fact that every time you see the ability to manipulate outcomes to your advantage it is called power I hope you know that the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge the hallmark of dominion is power what you know is useless if it cannot manipulate the outcomes of your destiny please listen carefully the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge the hallmark of dominion is power if you are walking in dominion in truth it must be demonstrated by your ability to select the possibilities that come into your life or the possibilities that remain in your life if you do not have that ability to edit the happenings in your life and only allow those that are consistent with the will of God to find expression what is missing in your life is power is someone learning already the ability to compel compliance I said every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power no wonder we look at people and we say this man is powerful when you see a wealthy man who is excelling you say wow this man is so powerful whenever you see men and women manifest um, extra supernatural or extra human abilities accomplish certain feats we usually will attribute them more to power than even it is to knowledge hallelujah i don't know how i stumbled across a video one time online where i think it's they slap themselves that's the the, the and it, it caught my attention and i said what in the world is going on here I mean literally a competition with people who come and then this guy will slap this guy if you are able to stand that slap then you now your turn they slap you back I, I, I don't of course everybody has a right to whatever it is that they believe but I found that amusing and then one of the guys who was purported to be a world champion it was now his turn to slap the other guy and with the determination of a winner he slapped that gentleman and I think the person passed out or, <laughs> or collapsed. And I said, that right there is power. <laughs> to manipulate an outcome to reflect your desire. Are we together? Yes. Many believers are stranded in life and destiny because they do not understand the dynamics of power they do not understand how to access it they did not they do not even understand how it works nor how to release and to dispense it and listen to me your Christian experience will be in a sorry state if you do not understand the dynamics of power and how to make it manifest Respectfully speaking, there are preachers struggling in ministry because they do not understand how the power of God works. There are individuals struggling across several areas of their lives because they do not know that the power of God is the privilege of all the saints. Look at me, please. When we talk of power, especially in the kingdom, I think subliminally we have been programmed to imagine that the power of God is the exclusive reserve for preachers apostles and prophets so when we say power immediately your mind goes to an apostle some prophet some evangelist some teacher and then once you do not feel called into the fivefold ministry we usually close our hearts to power and would gladly have to depend on the vessels we perceive to have power for us to partake of that power but I am telling you that when it has to do with the power of God he desires that all men Power is in several degrees. Power is in several dimensions. We're not necessarily discussing that tonight. Are we together now? But just for you to know that once you are in Christ, it is your heritage and your privilege as, as a result of that which Christ has done to access, to walk in, and to manifest in experience the power of God. You believe that? Say amen. amen. 
Psalm 66 and verse 3. It says, Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works. It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Submission is a product of power. When it has to do with elemental forces, when it has to do with the realm of the spirit, many people have heard the saying that the only language Satan understands is power. I believe that. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities and powers. It takes the power of God to manipulate circumstances and situations to reflect glory, to reflect grace. This is our mandate to bring everything to the obedience of Christ in experience. Hallelujah. Did the Bible not say it in, um, that should be Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent it says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Chapter 2 and verse 10 says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should work in them. And all of this will require power. More than desire, you will require power. Please listen to me. My brother, my sister, it will take power to rewrite the narratives, the negative narratives in your family. It will take power to force your portion to come to you and to remain with you. The Bible says strong men return, retain wealth. Wise men bring wealth, but strong men retain wealth. Are we together now? It takes power to compel your portion right from the days of John up until now the kingdom suffered violence it says the violence shall take it by force there is nothing that God desires to come into your life that will just come in cheaply Satan will not allow that he is a master at rebellion he is a stubborn spirit stubborn from the foundations of the earth and he will not allow anything including your portion to come to you without a contest not even salvation came at a platter of gold to us the recipients we got it freely but to him who paid that price he paid the price with his blood his reputation even his death if your life is going to change it will take power man of God if you must rise in ministry and excel it is going to take power it takes power to stop the devil from destroying your children and planting all kinds of negative and demonic seeds in them. It takes power. It takes power to ward off the antagonisms of men that plague our world and still continue to excel in spite of Satan, in spite of negative situations and circumstances. Someone say power. Let the devil hear you. Power. Now, pay attention. Very briefly, let me just share. This is not, there is something I want us to touch tonight before we pray. But the power of God, listen carefully. The power of God operates exclusively by faith. The power of God at work in the believer operates exclusively by faith that means power is faith dependent now for a long time um i think across the body of christ there seems to have been an age-long confusion as to the role of the power of god versus the role of faith and so erroneously we've had people who are supposedly the power people especially the charismatics we are the people of power, the people of the spirit, and they downplay the place of faith. And then, respectfully speaking, we have those who believe in faith as it were and do not seem to place any regard to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is nowhere in the Bible where believers are taught to dichotomize faith and then the ministry of the Holy Spirit or to choose one against the other. It is an unfortunate miscommunication of women and women of God. And I know that everybody is doing their best, but speaking from a standpoint of scriptural accuracy, listen, faith 
and the power of God work hand in glove. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. Are we together? When you say faith has brought you the victory, you are right. But the dynamics of that operation is that your faith connects you to the power of God. It is the power of God that is the force that actually produces the results. Are we together? Yeah. Imagine with me for a moment that you bought a nice gadget, say a fridge. Please look up. Walk with your minds now. So we have here a fridge. Are we together? Beautiful fridge that you bought from whatever, you know, where appliances are bought. And you have this fridge. It has the potential to cool anything. Your soft drinks, whatever you put in there. But did you know that there is usually a socket on your wall. Am I, am, I, am I right on that? That is connected to the power holding company. Now, that fridge can remain there for eternity, even though brand new. You will never be able to experience the potential. I hope you know that if you just put your tomato or your drinks there, it's going to rot and spoil there. Does that mean the fridge cannot cool? It can but now it's not connected to power. Does that even mean that the power holding company has not released power? There's power, but your connection. Are we together? And sometimes, how many of you know that the wire from your fridge to the wall may be too short sometimes? Am I right on that? And you may need to add to the wire to elongate it. Your assignment is that by all means, it gets to connect there. That long wire you see is what we call fate. The assignment of faith is to be a conduit for the power of God to flow. So when you say the wire is the reason why the fridge is on, you are not wrong. But classically speaking, there is power that flows through that wire. Am I right on that? Electricity, you call it. That is what really powers it. So as much as the power is available to power your fridge, if the wire that is connected is too small, you will need to elongate it. This is the dynamics of faith and the power of God. So imagine someone who says, I don't need the power in the wall there. All I need is to have a long wire. You can go and buy, you know, measure wires and buy it and even hang some on your shoulder. Now, there's no doubt that you have a lot of wire, but will the fridge still be cold? Then assume the person who keeps jumping and using a tester to say, look, I can guarantee you there is light there. The power holding company has released light. Will the fridge still be on? There has to be a synergy. Am I right on that? A combination between the socket and the power that is released there and then your wire that connects you. So faith connects you to the power of God, but it is the power of God that actually brings the results. Are you learning now? So if all you have is power, congratulations. But you are about to watch from a distance and be frustrated while you watch. Because it will take faith to transport that reality. So when the Bible says things like, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, he's talking about your conviction that now has given you room to take action and in taking your action you have now committed the power of God to flow hallelujah but it's important for you to know that the administration of the power of God is faith dependent what does that mean that means that administering the power of God is a product of conviction and obedience you're not going to independently or arbitrarily manifest genuine power. All kinds of power, even manipulated power, depends on conviction and obedience. If you go on, for instance, not, not to praise or glorify the devil, but just because of our discussion. Imagine with me that you were not saved back in our days, traditional practices, and you now went to some herbalist somewhere and said, Sir, I want my crops to produce maximally this year. Watch what he will do. He will say, so, so this is what you want? Yes, sir. I want to have a bumper harvest. He will laugh because that possibility exists in the spirit. Are we together? And then, based on his experience or his level of consecration or his ability to access familiar spirit, he will come up with a formula that controls what you are looking for. Am I, am I, am I right on that? 
when he consults with those mediums, they will now tell him what must be combined to produce that outcome you're looking for. So he will now give you the list. Go and bring a black goat, for instance. Go and bring one bag of beans or whatever it is. Go and bring this and that. Add 50,000 naira to it and then write the names of everybody who will be farming there and now you may not know what you are doing remember all you want is the outcome but number one your conviction number two your obedience you will now go and get all those things and bring it and say i've now brought it and he will conjure those things and say a lot of nonsense and gibberish that you don't care about while he's saying and once he will mix all of that thing he may give you something or he may say go and to your shock and wonder you will be surprised that your farm will start obeying you in a certain way. Hmm. Am I right on that? Yes. Bumper harvest. And people will ask you, how did you do it? Usually will not, you will not tell them where they were. You will just say, it's just God's grace. But you and the harvest and even God, you know that a transaction happened. Now listen carefully. Your eyes will be open to something I will teach you now. That is corrupted power, manipulated power. God is not glorified through the process because it is minus. It does not reveal and glorify Jesus. However, that process you see is a manipulation of spiritual laws. It is not an invention of Satan. Familiar spirits demand fraternity to reveal certain secrets to men by reason of their advantage being spirits. You are going to be learning. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. I do not know any herbalist, any spiritist or anybody, at least we see from Nigerian film, that you come and meet and say Baba or whoever, because they are both male and female, whether Baba or Mama, whichever one, I need help, look up please. Who will just tell you, you need help, go, it is done. Even if it's your biological father, he will demand action. There is something you must do. And based on the gravity of what you want to be done, that is the level of demand. There are sometimes they may say, are you ready to give your wife? Ah, my wife. But I'm desperate for this position. Say, well, we have consulted with the realm of the spirit and we have found out that this is the condition connected to this. And there are people sadly who would do it. That even includes your soul. The Bible is clear as to the fact that there is a place on earth where men can do business even with their soul and gain the world as a result. And the Bible, he knows that it will work. You gain the whole world by losing your soul. And the result will work. You are gaining the whole world, but will not see your soul that has been lost, unfortunately. Hmm. Everywhere the power of God is dispensed, there must be a demand for obedience. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere you see Jesus manifesting power, especially in the midst of men, there will always be an action. There will always be, he would ask them a question, do you believe I'm able to do this? If you believe, stand up, pick up your bed and walk. Or what should I do for you? You would think that as powerful and compassionate as he was and he is, he shouldn't even ask them any question. But there was always a demand because the power of God is faith dependent. Please listen carefully. The power of God is faith dependent. The power that lifts you is faith dependent. The power that attracts possibilities to your life is faith dependent. The power that will raise your children to become excellent people is faith dependent. The power that will grow that church to bring glory to God is faith dependent. And if you do not understand faith, then you cannot understand the power of God. Is someone learning? Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting 
use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be holy. Ghost fire. For